Hey there! My name is Nick and today I want to show you the design that I came up with for the Discovery Project, the ideal 4-inch long-range quad. Um, and I showed you in the last video what my thoughts uh, about it were that led to this design. Um, if you haven't checked it by now, you feel free to do so. Um, and today it's time to, you know, just show you what I ended up with. So let's uh, head right into it. All right, here we are. This is the Discovery Frame, my ideal four-inch long-range drone. I think we will see when I when I put it to the maiden flight. But theoretically, this thing should be pretty pretty awesome. Um, let me just give you a small rotation around it, um, and also down here. Let me show you what it looks like with a uh, 3S lithium-ion battery, which it is um, optimized for, and the GoPro. So this is like the complete setup as I, as it's intended to be used. Um, the I think a 3S lithium-ion uh, works best, and I talked about this in my last video. I think 3S is just perfect for micro long range in and 4-inch setup. Due to my testings, I think this is just the best combination. Um, all right, let's uh, get into the details um, and GoPro. Oh, by the way, uh, if you wonder why the GoPro uh, mount has these little nubs here, um, this is because I want to test out something. This is just a side project. Um, I'm trying to find the best way to mount uh, the Immortal uh, T antenna uh, that I use from, from TBS. And I want to try out mounting it this way. Even though it looks a bit weird, um, I think it might perform way better than having it down here because if you fly far away, which is, I mean, the idea of long range, um, then if you have the carbon of the drone in the way, this might interfere with uh, the um, reception, with the uh, link quality. And this is why I want to try mounting it up here because theoretically the way that um, the signal um, gets uh, sent and received, um, it should be better actually quite a bit better than having it horizontally. Um, there is a good video, I can't remember his name, Mr. Spukowski, something like that. Uh, I don't even know the name of his channel right now, but I'll link his video down below where he explains very nicely why this way of mounting an antenna is way better than the horizontal way. Um, but I don't know, it's just something I want to test out and maybe I'll put, make a sh short note in a future video about this, how, how it went. Um, but let's focus on the frame now. So, um, well, where should we start? Let's talk about the way that the arms are mounted with the main frame. And what I did use here is, as I said in the other video, basically the same way that Dave uh, used in for his 5-inch uh, setup. Um, and that means that we have, let's... Um, um, the lower deck is now not visible. So the arms are, it's just two arms um, and I think that works very well with this way of designing, at least for a quadcopter. Um, and they are um, put just directly onto each other here and then you have uh, um, this holes here that are used to mount them together with bike chain bolts and nuts. Uh, and uh, this creates a super strong and stiff connection while being super light. And this is just an amazing idea by Dave that, that I used here. I um, cut the, the length of the arms short, so it's 4 inch, it's optimized for 4 inch, um, so it's smaller. Um, and But this way of interlocking them, this is uh, the same as before. Um, all right, so um, so much about that. I'm always confused with these 3D views in Fusion 360. <laughs> Okay, let's look at it from the side and let's uh, make the arms not visible and motors and propellers. All right, so if you look at it from the side, uh, you can see that this is um, like this down here. This is not usable because this is where the arm is. Um, but we have a double stack setup. Um, we have a... Um, um, uh, um, yeah, stack up up here in the front with a lower height uh, where the flight control goes, and back here is enough space for a, a full Cadex Vista, so there is no need to strip it down here. Although, 
stripping it down reduces weight, which uh, increases the flight time that you're going to have. So you have to uh, make that decision for yourself, but you have enough space for putting a, um, a normal sized uh, Cadex Vista air unit here. Um, in the front, you have uh, less space. That is because I want to, I, I plan on using a, um, a J Hamsu uh, all-in-one flight control and ESC board, um, and that still gives me enough space for putting a Crossfire Nano receiver while keeping it at a low height. And the height here is 16 millimeters, which is like the lowest if you want to have the Cadex Vista in here. I theoretically could go lower with this all-in-one board, um, but I think that most people want to use this with a full-size uh, Cadex Vista, so that's that's uh, the, the way to go here. Um, and as you can see, what I diff also different to uh, Dave's uh, mini long-range design is that I, um, when I make the left arm visible here again, um, I made the this upper main plate uh, slimmer in in, in uh, the um, width here, and this way I I only um, have the different in height at this part and the parts where this upper um, plate and the bottom plate are connected. They all have the same. Um, let's make. Yeah, they all have the same um, distance from top to bottom, which is here 16 millimeters. But as it is the same height, you can just take any spacer bolt that you want and then adjust the height to whatever you need. So theoretically, you can make this, uh, you know, 10 centimeters high if you like. Um, because, I mean, these in the front here, uh, the 3D printed parts, they are, um, that's not the only thing that is in here because if I, um, make them invisible, you see that there is still a metal spacer bolt supposed to be here, or you can use nylon, but a spacer bolt and the 3D parts just get pushed onto these. Um, and this way you can easily have longer ones because they're still very um, stiffly connected to the um, to the spacer bolts. So it just doesn't matter. It's like it's back here. You see that the height of the spacer bolt is higher than the 3D printed part, but that doesn't matter um, because it still is connected very stiffly and, and snug. Um, so that's fine, and um, I feel this just gives you more freedom and flexibility, and that's why I chose this way of um, uh, of designing this. All right, let's make the other arm visible again. Um, then let's talk about carbon versus 3D printed parts. Um, let me also make the Helix Vista off, and let's... Um, put off the 3D printed parts. So this is what it looks like just with the carbon. And so this is just the carbon. And I really like the looks of this actually. <laughs> so in case you don't want to use a camera with it uh, or want to, you know, just design a different mount for the 3D camera that, you know, whatever you like, you can, for example, make it a little higher and put the camera right in between here. You can also do that. Um, and it's, it's just very flexible and, and gives you lots of options how to mount the camera to it. And it looks pretty awesome, I think, just the, the carbon parts. All right, um, but let's look at the 3D printed parts. Um, in the front, we have a mount for the um, Cadex Vista camera, which is the same as the DJI, um, the camera that comes with the DJI air unit and camera. Um, and let's put it in here again. Um, so the camera sits in between these two sides. This is, by the way, supposed to be as usual with these uh, mounts uh, with TPU, so flexible. Um, and you can uh, screw in um, the, the screws here to connect the, um, the, the camera with the, with the part. And this, this makes it very stiff, um, even though there's no additional um, connector in the front here, but just using the camera as a spacer bolt uh, gives it a super strong stiffness. Um, and if there is impact coming from the front, you know, this doesn't bend a bit. Um, this is super stiff and super strong and, and in my experience this works out very well and it is also very light because you know it's it's there isn't much to it it's just um, the these two sides here and this upper part and this upper part of course as you could see um, is for mounting the the GoPro naked to it or the GoPro light uh, as I should say um, and yeah, that's about it. And here, down here, you can just put the um, Immortal T antenna in between. That gives it a nice mount. Um, if you want to use different uh, different antenna or mount it somewhere else, I probably will also upload a version that does not have these um, uh, 
how do you say, the dismount option for the Immortal T, so it looks a bit nicer without these if you don't use the, the antenna. Um, in the back we have the um, GPS mount, and I don't think I need to say much about this. It's supposed to be used with a Byton BN180, which is the standard for um, these micro or smaller long uh, range drones. Um, it's it's performing quite well, you know, not perfect. It takes maybe a second later to, to get uh, connect to enough satellites, but it's working out very well, so um, I enjoy using that. Um, yeah, and actually I think this is mainly what I what I wanted to say about the design um, in order to reach uh, the um, so to put in the screws from the bottom to the um, to the flight control. I made these openings here so there's enough enough space. But that's also just like Dave had it in his design as well, and it's nice, and I kept that. Um, so that's working out fine. And um, yeah. I don't think I have anything else to say about this regarding what motors I'm going to use and propellers. I'm going to be talking more about the construction video, which will be next, because if you don't know by now, uh, my project always goes go through the um, concept phase, then the design phase, then the construction phase, and then fly and improve phase. And we are in the design phase. And previous video was about the um, the uh, concept phase. And next video, I will talk about the parts that I chose, why I chose them, what what performance I'm going to be expecting, and I'll also um, make a brief build video to show you how I put everything together. All right, um, so this is the design. Um, I would love to hear uh, your feedback, what you think of it, um, if you like it, and if you want to see how it looks like when it is uh, CNC cut and not physically uh, in place, then uh, you know just stay tuned, click on the bell icon so you get informed when the next video comes up, and then we're going to put this together, and in the other video after, we are going to fly it. Very much looking forward to that. Would love to have you aboard then. See you soon. Have a nice time. Bye-bye.